Hello and welcome to Liberty Nations LMTV. I'm your host, Mark Angelides, and we're joined today by Mr. Scott D. Cosenza Esquire, Liberty Nations Legal Affairs Editor. Welcome, Scott. Cheers, Mark. And Scott's here to talk with us about all the happenings at the Supreme Court. Now, Scott, um, did the Supreme Court grant new rights to homosexuals and trans folk? Mark, what the Supreme Court did was they applied existing law and added uh, a new class of persons that are covered by it. So what they said was that current federal law, which prohibits sex-based discrimination, now includes discrimination or firing somebody for being, uh, in part, trans or gay. So if part of a hiring decision uh, went the, the wrong way for a gay person because of them being gay, well, the Supreme Court says that is now covered under the Civil Rights Act of 1964's prohibition on sex-based employment discrimination. Okay, I mean, is it typical this uh, legislating from the bench scenario that we see when new rights are introduced? Well, this I don't think is a legislating from the bench scenario. I, I think that some might see it that way, but uh, Justice Gorsuch, who wrote the court's opinion, uh, went out of his way to say that uh, their reading of the law on the plain language of the law is what allows for this inclusion. So he says you can't discriminate against somebody on the basis of being a homosexual and not have that relate to their sex. Meaning, if you're going to fire a gay guy because he's attracted to men and you wouldn't have fired that person if they were a woman who were attracted to men, you've now committed a sex-based discrimination and that it's up to the Congress to craft the law in a different way if they want a different outcome. But that, that this was not a, uh, a wide reading of the law from the author's point of view. Some of you may disagree, but I think it's an important distinction uh, as we examine the rationale for the ruling. Yeah, I mean, did um, any of the liberal justices agree with Gorsuch? Mark, they signed on to his opinion, and so therefore they adopt his uh, reasoning and the outcome. So in this instance, they did agree with him. Okay. Now that leaves uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh and Justice Clarence Thomas as the dissenters. What did they say? And Justice Alito. And I Kavanaugh understand. and Alito both wrote separately in dissent. The dissenters said that people can discriminate against those who are trans or gay and not uh, come under the sex-based discrimination articulated in the 1964 law. They say, in part, nobody in 1964 thought this would mean this, and, th and that's a compelling reason to not uh, have the law include it today. Now, Justice Gorsuch uh, anticipates this argument in his majority opinion, and he says uh, it's not up to us to, to rewrite the laws and that it's somewhat legislating from the bench for us to do so, that if, uh, if the law is... Uh, clear uh, as we read it today, we should apply that law. Whether they anticipated that development or not in the 60s is not up to us. Well, Scott, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Mark. And thanks to you at home. Go deeper on the topic discussed in this video. Head on over to one of these links here or go to our Liberty Nation Roku channel. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Liberty.